series of tapes, Information versus Misformation, were recorded from classes this year by the Grandmaster, Dr. Malachi York, known to us as Naya Malachi Duck L, our own feral, I'm a newbie Dakata. These tapes were released in part so that you may listen and learn the profound facts as taught by the man of this hour. And now listen to the dynamic teachings of the Grandmaster, Naya Malachi Duck L. I've been trying to seek out the book, Return to Ancient Ones, of the Washapa tribe. For a long time, they keep telling us the book wasn't published, they kept telling me it wasn't printed yet. Yet, on several occasions, I've noticed that um, I'm just is holding the book up. Uh, I'm sorry. It's holding the book up. And then someone said the book is not available. So we try every, every means possible to get the book, only to fail. I wanted to find out what they were talking about as far as the Russian talk. However, but anyway, my brother there, he goes and finds a book from me and sends mail to me the book. And I'm starting to read, read the book. They have a whole section on um, Ben Yo. I remember him mentioning to me that um, the Empress mentioned that she was related to Ben Yo. And I was like, oh, very interesting. You know, now, in my history, as a, an answer, I wasn't concerned with my mother's side of the family. I was only concerned with my father's side, the Mahadiya side of the family, especially as an answer. So I never really did any research. Or if I heard the name York, I was like, so what? It didn't mean much to me at the time. I never knew, you know, how much it would end up meaning to me <laughs> in this part of my life. I just never knew that. I know about the family. I knew about the family in Virginia, Richmond. I know about the family in um, Boston, Suffolk County. Um, I know about the family moving to Pennsylvania, the um, I know about the family in Wyoming, and that's about it. I met the people in uh, Pennsylvania and in Virginia, as I mentioned many times, I met some of my mother's relatives, and I was amazed to see them with red feathers on, or crimson feathers to be more exact. With unmarkings, it wasn't Freemason or Shrine, it just was feathers and black suits. And I was like, okay, you know, more. But as a Muslim, I was familiar with the term more. You know, through Chef Belt. But it wasn't important to me because Ansar was more important to me than in the word more. And Nubian was more important to me because I was able to take my history back to the noble tribe of the Hadadawa, or the Fuzzy Wuzzies of Nubia, by being in the line of the Mahdi. Ali he said, I don't know if say that today. Right? And I totally ignored everything. I locked it on the base of the night. He found the Jazir of Abba in 1870. And I figured and that meant something because we found the Ansar Allah community in 1970. It matched up with their prophecies of a hundred years of reformation. So I had no idea how important this information was, but there was this drive towards you know, my Native American heritage, once I found out there was a piece of Native American heritage, and the woman that raised me, um, who they referred to as Diane Fletcher, right, was, her mother was named Black Feather, and I was nicknamed Black Eagle. Mm. I didn't care about it, the music, it had nothing to do with what I was doing. I was more into Israel Hadi or Mahdi, whether I was going Imam or Hajj or whatever, that's the lifestyle I lived in Islam. And this goes to show you how Islam is blind you. But he locked in Islam and nothing else appeared to have any value or importance to it. He been locked into a 1400 year old doctrine which claims, and that's simply claims, to link back to the Prophet Muhammad of Arabia and then from there they'll just grab Jesus and Moses and Isaac and Ishmael and Abraham and Enoch and, and right on back to Adam and claim it. And Adam was going to be on my neck, but he liked that. So you claim right along with him, claim and claim and claim it. And you don't have any regard for archaeological findings. You don't have any concern about geographics. It's like Islam started in Arabia and spread it, you know, across the world. And, Alhamdulillah. Allah will have to protect me and everybody else. 
You know what I'm saying? As you get older and much wiser, you start to probe more. And as I begin to look deeper into this, then you know, thing which I happened to stumble upon watching Bill Cosby. He had a program when he was much younger and he was talking about Nubians and the media and how the electric woman there portrayed us with big lips and picky hair and the buckwheat and you know, all of these Negroid you know, type of things. And so, when they came to the guy and said, and there was once a, an African who was a Native American named Benny York. And he was with Lewis and Clark. And I was like, oh. I wondered, I heard of Sergeant York before. I heard about the Sergeant York in Fort, you know, in the South here with the black troops. And I said, I must be related to him. And some kind of way, found out he was camped out of Virginia. I'm related to him. So I wonder if I'm related to this uh, Ben York fellow. This happened while I was in Brooklyn. You know, watching the video, and I wonder. That's what Bill Cosby, I thought it would be funny when I first got it. It wasn't funny at all to me when I really got into it. So I investigated and found out, oh yeah. He was related to Ben York, he's a great grandfather. I'm like, a great grandfather on this side is a Mahdi. A great grandfather on this side is a Native American. How did he become a Native American African? I want to know. I mean, that stands the reason, right? What's he doing in Louisiana? I want to know. You know, and this, what is it? How is he ready? Oh, he was in the Lewis and Clark situation. And I, when I did the five percent book, I asked a couple of relatives about the information. They gave me what they thought was correct. I said, oh, it's a little too far from there. He was there. And, you know, and he helped them with the purchase, etc., etc., etc. So I said, oh, wow. Came to Ben York. I investigated again about Ben York and his, his, his family line. I found out, oh, wow. He's from Mali. He's a Dogon. Okay. When I said Ben York comes from Ibn, and he came from the Ali family. They became the Prisi in Morocco when the Malians and the Senegalese invaded, moved north, and pushed the Spaniards and them out and took over the land. I think they spent a long time ago. Okay. So he's some kind of way affiliated with the Moors, the Moors. Still not important to me because and saw a lot of doctrine is concrete. Mahdiism family name is concrete. I'm already in full power. You know what I'm saying? Again, I don't think this is of any use to me. So I get a uh, tape from a fellow in New York called Hakeem Bey, a young, fiery, Moorish brother. And he's talking on it. I said, okay, he's talking about Moorish descendancy. Again, he didn't appear to have anything to do with us. Then I got one by Dr. Blair, Delwood. And on the opening of it, Hakeem Bey is there again. He had his fez on, and he's proud of his crimson fez, and how he must wear it, and with all Moors, and and I'm looking, this guy, and it starts to click. And he mentions the Empress. What do you ask? I say, a tuna, a tuna, a tuna. I say, okay, she's uh, from, from Nat Turner. She's from the Tuna tribe, and they're affiliated with the Washa tribe. And I remember that Ben York had a Native American son by a Sacha Kawia, and his name was Washa. Mm. And I said, Washa. Mm. And the women that they mentioned that the Frenchmen came over here and had sex with were from the Washo women. So I hear Washa, Washa. Oh. I don't know now, till this point, that Ben York is the half brother to Anne Marie, who is the daughter of the great Empress that Empress Variatia is talking about. The Aya. Anna Maria. I didn't know that when she said, I am a descendant, to mm -hmm. myself, from the great empress of the Washita. And she said, Ben York was a Washita, from the Washita tribe. I know about his seminal relations to find out that he had a wife that was seminal. And his Cherokee and his Choctaw, because he had wives of all these different tribes. I didn't know that there were three Satakuiers. That Charles Albert, who was a Frenchman, who was um, Jean Baptiste's father, mm -hmm. by way of Saxony, by force, he never married her, which was Ben York's wife, right? That's Jean Baptiste, who they tried to say came out of Haiti. 
when he's really related to a Canadian. French, the language. Mali, French, the invading language. Morocco, French, the invading language. Mm -hmm. Louisiana, French. <laughs> Cajun Queens, French. Creole, French. Haiti, what's the dialect? What they call it? Creole. What they speak in Louisiana? You see where he ties in. Now, thanks to his brother passing me that book like he's trying to get, and I don't know why the book kept bugging me, but as many books as I like, if I don't have the time to sit down and read other people's books, I really don't. But then my hands on this book seem to be an obsession. So we pile out up in New York on our land, and um, Mount Zion, and all the Native Americans came out, and they told us a story. The chief sat down and they said to me, you know who we all are? We all represent the black people. I heard that before. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> we're calling ourselves the Shoshone Nubian tribes. Because we're relating ourselves to Sachakawea's family, the Shoshone, of which Ben York was living with. We didn't even associate ourselves with Washita, and nor did we identify with the fact that Ben York himself was a Washita, a L or Ali, because we only saw him as an African who came over with the African tribe that moved in here. You see that? So we didn't have no reason that he could identify what tribe he was. So when I read in a book that he was Washita, I was like, Phew. you know, I was amazed to find out that Ben York was a Washita because then the picture gets clear to me why I'm involved and why back in 1970 when pure Sufi became human Islamic Hebrew we wore tarbushes. Everybody else called them Fez but because we knew more Arabic than most people we knew the Arabic name for it was a tarbush and that the Freemasons called it Fez when they went into the city of Fez when the crusade blocked them from getting into the Holy City and they relocated. We know his story. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like way back then, you wore the same outfit I have on the day, we called it a butler. The Moroccan word also, for suit as well as our rips and knees. And we wore feathers and a six pointed star crescent and all. As a symbol. Upright crescent. Nobody else was wearing it. Nobody else even saw it before. But Freemasons of a higher order, like the temple, they glance over at you and go, hmm. You know what that means? They wrote a man like a pesky? They go, okay. The Esophagus said, okay. We know you know what took place. We know who gave birth to the fairies in this planet. And they back off. That's all they need to know is you knew. You know, your ancestors. You say, well, we're founded in the Quran. We're not a sect. Like the Masha Taqwa, Masha Iqwa, and Master Yassin and Master Rina here we find ourselves Ya ayya alladheena amanu kunu an sallallah O you who are faithful, be kunu an sallallah We find ourselves mentioned in the Qur'an There Not because we want to be called that Not because our Imam is tripping he likes the name an sallallah Not because it reminds him of his desire to be taqwa Or ikhwa Or ikhwaniya But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed it in the Qur'an and in the phase that we're traveling to, unbeknown to us, being guided by the ancient ones, our ancestors, we thought we was in control, and they were just driving this tram when we were sitting there on the path to where we are now. Unbeknown to us again. <laughs> so as we moved down this road, and we met among the side of the table from Nubian Islamic Hebrews to Nubian Islamic Hebrews and Sadullah King. Then, I take these brothers who walk with me back to State Street. I tell them, well, listen, we don't have a masjid, a place of prayer as yet. So I'm going to take you all back to the place I used to go to when I was a kid. Having been and found on record in State Street from June 12, 1957. Before most of the Sunni Muslims who say I'm not a Muslim were even born, I was sitting in there, and dawn, I'm going to go back to the old pictures and look around. And you go back to the book and look at the old pictures in the Masjid of State Street, you know that most of the men who were sitting there knew they got on these feathers. So I'm going, hmm. Then I look at Chef Daoud again, and I realized that what he wore as a shawl was nothing but a shawl given to him by 
King Faisal of Saudi Arabia, he wore wrapped around his fez. Look at the picture again. That's it, Chef Daoud, Moroccan, Moore, Stacy. I said, when we get there, we're not confident. Why? Because Stacy was in the control at the time of the Pakistanis. One Chef Afis Mabu, who couldn't speak fluent Arabic, was teaching Ali Bar Tata to the Sunni, and this be Law Rahman or Rahim, and Hair Rahman and Hair Rahim, and other skate rings and stuff. <laughs> and they could not deal with this new group of people that would come to Sarko uh, Juma on Friday, dressed in all black with these tall black feathers with a green six pointed star present on our, what do we call butler, or Khamis, or Khamis. And Chef Dow would come downstairs and point out and say, See that guy right there? Point at me. That's y'all's leader. Follow him. These Pakistanis don't know what they're talking about. That man there is y'all's leader. And the more he would do that, the mad the Sunnis would become. Until one of them got up and walked over to me, a Pakistani that is, and attempted to reach for my nose ring, saying, This is not Islam. What is, and I said, You touch my nose. You touch my nose ring, I'm going to break your face in his mask. <laughs> see? <laughs> he says, see, these are not Muslims. I said, excuse me, sir, we never claim to be Muslim. We claim to be Nubian, Islamic, Hebrews. And if you were a Muslim, you would know the Hebrews are your father. Because Abraham was a Hebrew. And if you knew that I, as your father, was a descendant of the Hebrews, you know why I have this nose ring because you would have read the Torah in the 24th chapter. And you would know about the ring in my nose. But being you don't, and you don't, don't touch me because I'm not one of these flunky American converts. He made a big mistake. What a wall in all these guys. He said, I'll show you something. And he ran across the room to the niche, which was in the wrong direction, by the way. They didn't find out the niche was in the wrong direction. And so like, 30 years after having the mosque on State Street, they were facing the wrong direction. Every time I'd come in there, I would tell Abdul Wali and Sadiq and I'd say, you know, the mental drive is really that way, but the reason why they can't put it that way is because they're using someone's living room, and the sisters are on the other side of that curtain. And it would throw their whole community off, because the sisters would end up getting the biggest back to the back room, which would be the biggest room. And the racistness of their, and the male chauvinism of the organization won't let them shift it around, divide the rooms, the two rooms adjacent to each other from right to left, because that man's room would be smaller. So they're all facing the wrong direction. Or are they just demons and they know it? These Hindus. And then we would tell them this is not the uh, grim guy. And uh, we would go to East and we would say, East and West belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we're getting there. We're stretching the they, they say, East and West belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then turn around and say, which way is East? <laughs> right? So we had conflict with that. We had to tell them back off. Chef Yao started to take sick. We worried. Because Chef Yao would leave State Street and come over to the Anson Law community wherever we were located. And spend all of his yad or festivals like Eid al Adha and Eid al Fitr with us. And that made the Sunnis mad again. They couldn't understand that if we were Kafir or Kufr, they had all kinds of pronunciations. Why would Chef leave State Street where they're setting up this big festival and go over there and join those fanatical guys over there on Bushwick Avenue or St. John's Place or Rockaway or Utica? What are you doing over there? Why? Are we just going to come out and pick them up? And you would see all the Thackeys and the Sunnis standing on the stoop with their lips poked out, mad at us. You know right? So we would scoop them up and bring them to the kids. He would say, this is my community. He would spend that day with us and then we would deliver him home. But Sheikh Dao took sick. It was right after we had a war with Sunni Muslims. For State Street. Of which we took over. And Sheikh Dao told us that he wanted us to come and protect him. So we went into State Street, we built the gate up there to keep them from getting up there. You follow that? And eventually, the Pakistanis called the police on us. So we had to leave, but didn't have the right to be there. About. Even though Chef Dao wanted it. So we would stay outside, brothers would stay outside day and night. Eventually, his health got worse. 
and he had to take him to a hospital. And our brothers would go to the hospital every day and stay floor above it, floor beneath it, and surround it. And we watched these Pakistanis sneezing and out with hate and guts. About Eventually they called the cops on us. The so-called Sunnis, Negroes, and the Pakistanian brothers. And made us stay away from the hospital. Within a couple of years after that, or not even years, a couple of months after that, Chef Hell was dead. And they forbid us, he wanted me to perform his funeral. And they forbid us to come to the funeral. Is this true? He wasn't allowed to come to the funeral. But they didn't know that Chef Hell had given me a certificate to become the proprietor of the Islamic Mission of America is what it's called. And because a new charter was issued to us and saw our community of the Islamic Mission of America with a seal that went back to 1944, a year before I was born, giving us the power of our own sovereignty and linking us to what he was as a Moor who was raised in the Caribbean, making us Moors and why we unknowingly put on the crown of the Moor. Because only knowing to us, we were being guided by the ancient ones. And we didn't even know it. And our success as a community, Ansar, baffled the Sunnis to the point where they accused us of being Zionists and part of the Jews. And they had something new every week because we were progressing. And the progress amazed us, unknowing that we were guided by the ancient one, but rather thinking that we was getting the help of an unconfirmed ancient <laughs> Arabian idol god called Allah. One of the 360 gods that was worshipped in a cube-shaped building in Central Arabia, moved up from Southern Arabia from the Sabians in the Sheba period, and the God's name was also Rahman. That's why the Quran says, call on Allah or call on Rahman. The southern is called him Rahman. One of those deities became God. And a crescent God he is. And we were called on this crescent God because when Muhammad supposedly received it, he said, believe in the Ray. Ray, the unseen. You see? And that's very tricky. Because you won't be able to figure out what that means unless you look up at the sky. And you look up at the sky as a Muslim, and that first ascension would be Salat al Fajr. It would be in the morning. And you wouldn't see the moon, you would see the light of the sun. And if you travel the skies, as a Muslim, in your religious practice, you would go from Salat al to Salat al afternoon, and you wouldn't see the moon. And if you kept on walking that path, you'd go through Salat al evening, and you wouldn't see the moon. And then you'd have to wait for the sun to set, because according to the Quran, for the sun and moon, cannot shine at the same time. And the Arabic word chosen for moon was Kama. The Q has always been interchangeable in the Semitic languages with the K, which produced Kama. Kama. Everybody was talking about your Kama. An unseen force that controls your destiny. Kama, Kama. Same word. By the time you get to Salat al Maghrib, which appears to be the sunset, you are in a mosque under a, under a metal moon on the top of the dome, making your last prayer of the day. Now, note that when they got to the fifth prayer, they didn't identify it with the sun or the day to the night but rather with dinner. And they called it Salafurish.
And he'll translate that as late night prayer. And late night is two different words. Layla and body. After. Late and night. Has nothing to do with what the word Isha meaning them. Because you should be inside your tent. For that. Or in the masjid here. So the unseen deity of the Quran is the Bakra. Allah called Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. They have a cover. They actually have a prayer for the moon, a sun, for Shamsa, for the sun, a moon, for the zodiac, and then for the star. They have chapters that are entitled the sun, the moon, the stars. <laughs> The Zodiac, they have chapters that symbolize Hathor, Surah al Baqarah, mm -hmm. the Surah of the Cow, an ancient Egyptian female deity who was an incarnation of the deity Isis. Mm -hmm. And one of the gods who reigned with Allah as an idol in the Kaaba was El Uzza, Isis. And the temple of the Kaaba, they admit, was a reconstruction job in Muhammad's time. Really? They admit that the Kaaba, which means cube-shaped building, was reconstructed in Muhammad's time and a meteorite called Hazrat al-Aswad, black stone, was put in it and it faces the direction of the south. They follow? And they all that one is they call the stone of Yemen facing south where the statue of Allah was dug up with an inverted crescent on his chest, on the statue. Of course, it's going to be in books for you to see soon. You see that? But they openly tell you that this Kaaba is not something that was created after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got his revelation. It wasn't revealed to him to go build the Kaaba. But rather, it is the holiest site on earth, according to them. And all Muhammad did is reconstructed a building that Abraham and Ishmael has supposed to have constructed. Who claims in the hadith that it goes back to Adam. That it was the first holy house and if you declare Adam a Muslim and one who made Salah, then he worships at the Kaaba before Abraham. You with me? So the Kaaba is not an Islamic or Muslim or 1400 year old building. It's a 6,000 year old building, reconstructed several times, and finally when Muhammad came, it had been filled with 360 idols. See, the 360 idols was an Egyptian practice, and the Egyptians did not worship the moon god. The Egyptians worshipped the sun god. So the solar calendar would have to have 360 days in it for the motion of the planet around the sun. So in Muhammad's time, in the year 622, they had to get away from the sun deity and get into the moon deity, so they introduced a lunar calendar, his calendar. You see that? They were reinstituting their old paganistic religions, but trying to take control of the now radical Mecca. I say radical Mecca because Mecca was saturated with everybody else's God, except the Mecca's God. Allah was just classified as one of the deities and his daughters and his wives. All the other deities were from foreign people who came there to do trade. 
You see? So Muhammad was to bring in the crescent deity. Allah. Um, I had to make that clear to you. So you can see why we travel from the crescent back to the sun. But they travel from the sun over to the crescent. And why the ancient ones took us through the study of the crescent, Islam, and then on over to the sun. And I repeat, if you got it tomorrow, this goes to any Muslim, 5%, nation of Islam, God of the land, whatever you call it, Christian or Jew. If you got it tomorrow, and Allah was not in your holy book, you understand? You would have nothing that would affect you. Would it? But if you got up tomorrow morning and the sun was not in the sky, you can guarantee that you'd be dead <laughs> within a couple of days. If you remove the physical sun from a part of your life, there will be no growth. No vegetation. If you remove the moon out of the sky, which has an effect on the tide and the gravity and the clouds and the rain, there'd be no water. You saw what I'm saying? So, I put before you, if you remove your God, we won't miss him or her. <laughs> if you remove our God, we will miss you and everything else that lives on the planet Earth. You see what I'm saying? I didn't know that the ancient ones was taking us on this long path back to themselves. I was attuned to the world and the events was taking place in the world and see, to get of sight. But I didn't know that I was a Washington. I didn't know that Ben York was a Washington. I didn't know he was directly related. I know he was involved with the Shoshone. I didn't know that you were Washington. You follow that? I heard it through Hakim, I heard it through different brothers, Harari, they, and different brothers, but I didn't know that we were. Most of the people that are talking about us are not Washington themselves. They're Moorish scientists. And when they were pointing out that I've got a lot of nerve when I'm putting back on those feathers, now I'm, it's about time you brothers caught on. They said, caught on to what was ours. <laughs> and unless you can prove that you are a Washita, then it's really not yours. You are convert. But you cannot take away the fact that I am a York. A Y O R K. York. You cannot take away the fact that I produced my birth certificate in a family and you saw that it was issued July 3rd, 1945, out of suffix in Boston. You can't deny that. You can't deny that the Yorks resided in Boston where Ben York went. You cannot deny that my mother's family are in Richmond, Virginia and always have been, generation to generation and wore feathers <coughs> and she's right there now and Ben York died in Richmond, Virginia in 1879 and was born in 1787 when we correct the record and have, they have one of the sons instead of him mm -hmm. they do that purposely mm -hmm. a lot of those facts, they distort them perfectly so we cannot make these connections you can't deny that. And the great actress had already written it in her book before I got the book. That she is related to Ben York. She had already written the book that the word Louisiana comes from Lulu, Louise, Anna, and New in her book. <laughs> oh yeah. They can't take that back. It's in the book. They mistranslate the word for Lulu. They said the Hebrew word for God, but it's not. We know it's a Sumerian word. You know what I'm saying? Well, primitive. But it's okay. 
my sister, she's doing her best. So now I stand before you, and silly father says, well, oh boy, he changed the game <laughs> for the better. Right. And find out that historical records prove that when you were mocking me, fool, when I'm saying I'm your mom, he's son, and he's like, oh, you're a white York, oh, you're a York, oh, you Dr. York. Yeah. You fools didn't know that you were opening up the enemy to find out something greater than the Nazi. Mm. 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 Greater than that. But that rather than my great grandfather, and I'm not talking about Muhammad Ahmed al Mahdi, alayhi salam, of the Ansar of Sudan. You said that's not my grandfather, that I'm not affiliated. That I'm not an answer, but that I am an American, and that I was born here, and that my family is York, and you know my mother Mary, yeah, all the Russia women were called Maria, which is nothing but the French way, Maria St. Mary. And Williams, her main name, came from William Clark, who took them to slavery. Hello? <laughs> what you don't realize is that. My ancient ancestors, the Washita, were also controlling the fate of your lips so that you would be putting my foot in your mouth <laughs> for this day and time where these things would be revealed and it is a worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> And I can trace back people in here, Williams, Fletcher's, um, Johnson's, Parham's, and different parts of you people when I get your last names and find out you're also a part of that people. And this is why many times you didn't feel African when you looked at Africa. <laughs> this may be why some of you in the 60s didn't go dashiki, sandal, and drum. You say, well, I'm, I'm part Native American or something. But I and when you saw African American, oh, you know, you know, they're naked in there. <laughs> you know, he's like a magazine, you was like, you know. I know I'm laughing all Afrocentric crap, but I don't really feel African. And you was ashamed to say it. You know what I'm saying? It's because you weren't. You are all mass, indigenous people, Moors. And I got to keep explaining the word more for my Moorish brothers being a language. Because they keep making the mistake of thinking that more is really an ancient name. You with me? I must establish that the word more is simply Morenos. And then they'll go, no, it's M U U R, Moor, French. You with me? And they were describing us. But in this conversation, I must also address the brothers of mine who call themselves Hispanic and Latin. Your father, you are not Hispanic and you are not Latin. We have to use Latin American in order for them not to call you a Spaniard or a Spartan. You don't want to be tired with that. So we will force, oh, that's so tricky, to use the word Latino and Latin American. And you don't speak Latin. <laughs> you speak a derivative of it. So you're no more a Latino than an American is a British. And so far as he's speaking a derivative of English, but not the Queen's English. And no Nubian or Nuwapi in America or more wants to be referred to as British. Or uh, British national. Except for the Hebrew word Brit, the rest of the company, which they don't seem to be aware of. But when they call you a Latin American, they're calling you a Roman. The Romans spoke Latin. <coughs> Follow that? They're not even calling you a Sicilian, which is a Cartagenian, under Hannibal from Libya and Caruma. Have you know the story of the great Hannibal Hill? They're not even giving you that. They're trying to make you think you are a Roman. And as I said before, and when you try to trace a Roman history or a Roman roots, you come back to two brothers raised by a wolf. You go back to a myth. You don't want to go back to a myth. You are a Morenos. 
And you're not Moreno by color. You would be Negra by color if they wanted to say black like in your color. But Moreno is black like in the supreme balanced state that existed before the light was cut off. The godlike state. And when they identified both parties in America, they called them black amores. Negra Moreno. <laughs> Understand that? They cannot let you link your way back. If they do, they take you back to Morocco, but won't tell you that Mauritania sounds more like more than Morocco. And Mauritania means Moorish place. And it's the only part of the Islamic world in Africa that wears the upright crescent on a green flag, a yellow upright crescent. Everybody else is using either the crescent to the right or the crescent to the left. You follow that? If you look for the North African flags, you see that the Moroccan or the Moors use the flag of North Africa. If you look at the flag coming up on the on the uh, base of the black border, we come up on the left side, you're looking at Turkey and places like that, which the nation of Islam tied in because of. Wallace Dodd for the Turkish. Turkish and of course if you look at the word Dodd, D-O-D-D, -E, in, Freem in Freemasonry, you find it is a sacred book. It comes out of France that they're looking for. And only two copies still exist. So we're going to So they have to derail you finding your roots, because if you find the roots, you can re-doctor it and grow fresh plants again. That's why they use root. They want to cut us off at the root. And it was amazing for me to say, I'm a worship God. But I want to make it clear that the Islamism of it are uh, or is Barber invasion. The Berbers, which is a mispronunciation of Barber, which comes from the word barbarian, conquered and brought in Islam to Morocco. When we moved as Dogons from, over to, from Egypt over to Mali, and then we moved north and took over what they're now calling Morocco, they don't call it Morocco in Morocco. They call it Maghrib. The word Maghrib means Salat al-Maghrib, where the sun sets again. Or the west. There was no Western world other than Morocco. If you ask someone in the Arab world, where is the West, and say it in Arabic, ain't no another. They say, al <laughs> Ain't no another. Mother, mother, As far as they're concerned, the, as far as West went was, Morocco, there was nothing on the other side of that. You see? But the Dogons of Mali, who were mystically in tune with the Cyrus Star constellation, they knew that the vortex created, what am I going to say? A tide that moved from what's called Ephrathia or Africa today right over to America. Moving right on down into the Caribbean Islands and straight on up to where you find the Bermuda Triangle. Let me give you the Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle. You with that? Yeah. The Bermuda Triangle is not but a three-sided angle. Some say permit, others can call it a tetrahedron. Until you start putting the, the geometrics into it, it's not there. It's the only place on the planet except one more where the compass needle still points do not regardless. Did you know that? Did you know there's one more place? And another triangle? It's called the Devil's Triangle. This one is named Bermuda after the place. It's in China on the other side 
of the whirling vortex that moves between 32 and 33 degrees on this planet. Mm. You understand? And on the other side, there is a, another triangle. Bring the two triangles together before the land masses move and you get to a six-pointed star, as they call it. They cheat <laughs> and tell you it's a star, but throughout all of your learning in America, you have to go find out on your own that a star is a sun. They don't just get up and say, well, by the way, you know, a star is a sun. Until now that we found out, now we remember years ago, that wasn't even an algorithm. That was fine. Why is a star? I didn't know the sun was a star. It's one of many. You follow that? The six pointed star, and they called Arabia, which was a new place, the Middle East. You cannot be a Middle East. You can have a middle in the east, but then you, you cannot be the Middle East. A shuttle from Elsa does not exist. You understand? Play no more games. The day has come. So what they did when the wise got wind of it is they started referring to it as the fertile crescent. When there was nothing fertile about a radio. More like futo. <laughs> and they were putting together the fact that this crescent ribbon was between the two triangles on the planet that when brought together will open the vortex. You with me? <laughs> hey, Mr. Muslim. <laughs> Let's talk. Right. See what you're talking about. <laughs> when you bring the two crescents, the Bermuda Triangle, I mean the two uh, pyramids, the Bermuda Triangle and the Devil Triangle together in the center of the fertile crescent, you get a six-pointed star and crescent. Symbol of the ancient ones. That's why they lean over and say to you, Do you know what that six point star crescent means on your hand? <laughs> and you let it go. Yeah. <laughs> they peep at the unk in the middle of it. Say, What is that unk? You say, The key. <laughs> you follow? Yeah. So you know a little something. Yeah. I say, no, I know a little more than something. <laughs> I know what time it is. Right. I know when the stars, the pyramids crisscross and the crescent rises, the dad is a fertile crescent that is hit with the star of the ancient ones, what would happen? The vortex. I know it. You know it too. But you never thought I'd find out before it was too late. You thought you'd keep me wrapped up in music, and in movies, and in drugs, and in parties, and in dressing, and in hoarding. And wishing, and wanting, and fantasizing on something that I'm not. You never knew that I would find out. You never knew that there'd be one raised up from amongst us. You kept looking in the wrong direction. You couldn't see us. I'm going to tell you why you couldn't see us. Because it's hard to focus on a moving target.